Well, hello everyone. Thanks for your patience. We're starting with a little bit of 10 minutes of delay, but it should be fine. So thank you everybody for joining and welcome to the scientific webinar Sala Aula do Futuro, the inquiry-based learning net. My name is Marina Jimenez and I will moderate this session. Today with us uh, we have presenting Carlos Cunha. But before I introduce him, I will introduce Maite Brevri. She is the project manager for the STEM Alliance project. And before we start with the session, she will say some more. So, Maite. Hello, everyone. So, I'm really happy that you are all here for our webinar co organized by Scientix and the STEM Alliance. So, it's very nice because uh, Carlos Cunha will uh, present a great example of nice STEM uh, education activity that can be done with collaboration between a school and some private companies. So the webinar is organized in the frame of uh, STEM Discovery Week, which uh, takes place from 22nd to 29th of April, so it's until tomorrow. And so the uh, objective of this week was to highlight all the great uh, collaboration between different stakeholders that uh, are contributing to improve STEM education. So there's a competition going on, and uh, the deadline is 15 of May. It's STEM for you, and if you want more information, you can visit the website, which is stemalliance.eu. And uh, we have also another, so we have uh, plenty of activity going on during this week, and we also have a community of practice, which are on moderated forums that you can join also if you go to the STEM Alliance website. We can also share the link after in the forum. So thank you very much. Now I will uh, stop talking and uh, let uh, Marina continue the moderation and Carlos present the FCL in Portugal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maite. Uh, for the, the, the links that you've mentioned, I will put them on the forum right now. Just to clarify, this is STEM Alliance project and there is a, currently a community of practice going on at the moment. If they will, you're able to participate because it's open for everyone, I will leave the link and we really encourage you to participate. So now going back to the webinar, um, the speaker of the session is Carlos Cunha. She is a he is a scientist ambassador for Portugal and has been in the project since the beginning. He is the project coordinator for his school and he is responsible for the learning lab Sala da Aula do Futuro. Uh, he will present this topic over the following 45 minutes and for the remaining 15 minutes after the presentation, we will uh, welcome any questions or doubts that you have uh, regarding this topic or any of the topics that Carlos will talk about. So please don't hesitate to use the chat at the end or during the presentation to leave your questions. Also with us is my colleague Enrique. He is uh, using the Scientix account. He will be helping with any technical problems that you might have. So please talk to him privately using the chat if you're experiencing any technical pro uh, project uh, problem. Sorry. Um, also, can you remind you to please turn off your microphone and camera during the talk? And uh, with further ado, um, I'll introduce a little bit more to Carlos. Hello, hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you uh, to the European School Net to, to invite me for this webinar presenting the Salvador Futuro here in Stubal and uh, how we get uh, this far. So I will try to share to share an application now with you. Okay, there should very well. So the, the question is, uh, a lot of people ask me, um, whenever, how could we do it at our school? This is a small school from Portugal, a small school from our own, our own uh, city. So uh, the idea is, how can we do it and how could we do it and uh, how can we keep it running? So, so what you need in, in your school, if you want to make a, a learning space like this, is um, to get the right space. So you, you need a big room in your school uh, in order to, uh, to make the installation of such a, a classroom. Um, 
and uh, we have uh, a minimum of uh, uh, something around 17 square, square meters of area for a, a room like this. And then only after that you can do something to start building a, the, the, the room itself, the, the learning space itself. First question often is how can you get the equipment for the room? Well, um, start looking for your school and start looking for the equipment that it is already on your school and it's not being used uh, uh, properly. Uh, for instance, uh, it, probably you have interactive whiteboards in your room, in some classrooms, that are only be used as a projector. So the idea is um, take the, uh, the white uh, uh, interactive board to this learning space and put a projector and a screen on that classroom. Um, I can give you more examples. Uh, in this case, the computer, we, we had some computers in storage and so the computers came from the school. Um, of course, uh, all the chairs and uh, the cameras and so on, we grabbed them from other places on the school. For instance, the camera was at the library. They have two of them. We asked uh, for one of them for this uh, room. And then start making a, an investment plan uh, in order to uh, have your uh, learning space installed in uh, uh, a time uh, interval that is uh, suitable for the school, I would say two to three years. And so you can start making the investment on the floor. In this case, our option was to put a vinyl floor over the wood um, in colors, uh, dividing the zones but you can put uh, 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 a floor in one only color and then divide the zones in, a, in other way. So uh, the possibilities are uh, a lot. Um, the idea is that a, a learning space like this should be attractive and, and comfortable to the students. For instance, you shouldn't have a cement or a, um, a porcelain uh, kind of floor because it's very cold. Uh, so it should be vinyl or should be uh, some kind of tissue or something. And the colors are also important. The other aspect is if this is a ground floor uh, room, you should increase the security on the room because you will have a big amount of equipment, very expensive equipment. So you should increase the security on this kind of space. And then for the presenter area, you should get something to, to put the, the students seated in a comfortable way. So our option was for these two blocks, uh, inspired on the Future Classroom Lab in, in Brussels. These ones are made of wood and, and we can uh, seat in each one 10 students. So we can put 20 students very comfortably seated on a very small space. And these blocks have another advantage. In the back side, you have a lot of open space with doors, so you can storage a lot of things there, like the, the, the tablets and so on. The, the, the investigate area can get the, the tables from your labs, from your chemistry or physics labs. In some cases, you have extra uh, tables there, so you can grab two of them and put on this space. And then get uh, equipment, uh, lab equipment for this uh, kind of, uh, of space. And finally, in most cases, uh, even in Portugal, uh, the, the economic support, the, the financial support is, is, is being made by the city halls of the schools because in schools up to 14 years old kids um, uh, the responsibility is from the city hall so the city hall could make some investment on, the, in, on creating such a space if you can show them the advantages of this kind of learning spaces and then the collaboration with industry um, 
of course, that um, this is not easy. This is one of the, the hardest parts to do because it's not so easy to get to the right person on the industry to, to ask for the collaboration. Um, that's why this room has an important role in Portugal, for instance, because I made all the, the hard work of getting the contacts, on the, the right contacts of the right persons to all the, these industries. And now when a principal comes here to see this, the room and uh, to get inspired for the, their own room, I, I gave them directly the contacts of these industries and so it's much easier to make contact with the industry. The truth is that most of the, um, most of the companies that are somehow connected to the education are very willing to cooperate with these kind of spaces, especially if you can keep them um, visual to the, to the media and to the press, because it is a way of spreading the, the branch of the, the company, the, the, the image of the company. Um, the other aspect is that the, we, we have uh, young students that will be the consumers of, the, of tomorrow. So if they get used uh, for, to some kind of uh, company uh, of products, they will be consumers of those products in, on the future. So this project, um, this learning space uh, was um, a huge uh, cooperation between the school, the, the DGA, the, the Educational General Directory of Education, and uh, something like 12 to almost 20 companies now. Um, and um, the collaboration is not only on uh, putting here the equipment, um, they also provide the training for the teachers uh, and training for the students also. Uh, so, uh, for instance, uh, in the case of Microsoft, they participate always on the SecurityNet uh, um, initiative, and they came here to show the students, and that's an European initiative. So, um, and uh, for instance, today we have a partner here uh, of uh, Pasco. The, they have. Uh, uh, sensors for physics and chemistry, for STEM, for STEM education, for STEM uh, uh, subjects, and they they change the system because now the the, the, the sensors are uh, working with Bluetooth, and so there will be a, a training session here uh, later on the afternoon with some uh, 30 teachers on how to use the new system and how to. Um, how, how can you uh, connect the old system to the new system and to the new software? So the collaboration with industry keeps going on, and it, it's not uh, um, it, it is not a poncho uh, 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 collaboration. It was not only put here the equipment and it's there they they, they turn out. Uh, they turn on their backs and go on, go off. No, they still keep here and keep coming and see if we are doing well, if we need something. So most of the companies that have products connected with education are willing to work with the, the schools, especially if the schools are doing uh, STEM education. So step by step, you are build, you, you can keep building your own learning space. When you have the learning space ready, then you really start the art uh, work and the, the art uh, uh, function here, especially if you are the coordinator of the space. The main problem here is that, uh, well, this is not quite a, a, a regular classroom. So the students are not aligned to the board and the teacher is not being teaching um, some kind of talk near the board to the, to the sitting students. So the students here are divided by the zones. They have objectives in each zone, in each class. 
um, we used the uh, uh, learning story model that was developed by the iTech project that you can find uh, through Scientix. Um, and we use uh, inquiry-based learning methodology. So the teacher is getting out of his uh, comfort zone and uh, it's been very hard to bring the teachers from our school and from the schools nearby to this kind of uh, learning space and have them teach here. So it is a quite a, a challenge for the principal of the school if he believes the project and if a school has a learning space like this, it is mainly because the principal believes on the advantages of such, a, such kind of space. Um, and of course, for the coordinator of the room that wants the, 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 learning, uh, the learning classroom, and the new learning space being used, being uh, enjoyed by the students and providing students uh, better learning and uh, meaningful learning. Um, so having the aim on improving the results of the students. What is the purpose of this learning space here? So the idea is to uh, change this. This was the past. This is 90% of today's classrooms. Um, you may see the, um, the faces of most of the students. They are very, very, very uh, paying attention to the teacher. Um, very happy to be there. It's a very happy face. Um, and the idea is to change something like that. And the students are divided by places, by zones. They have their own tablets or computers. They can bring their own devices. And so they have the aim of a learning story. And the idea is to uh, fulfill the learning story until the end of, time, of the time that the teacher decides. In our case, in most uh, of the learning stories, the students have 45 minutes to, to solve the learning story um, and so the idea is to uh, change from the buzz-like classroom for a much open and um, uh, different learning uh, space like this. So we have classes uh, we, uh, promoting IDL, uh, inquiry-based learning, and promoting also interdisciplinary. This is a hard word. Um, the idea is that the, all over Europe, uh, I, I can notice that, that the students are teached on boxes. There is the box of maths, there is the box of physics, the box of chemistry, the box of biology, the box of geology, and so on. And the connections between those boxes are not made. So when a student uh, learns how to uh, calculate the volume of a pyramid in maths, uh, and if the, the history teacher asks the student the day after to, uh, to, the, to calculate the volume of the, one of the Egyptian pyramids, the student will answer that he doesn't know how to do it. Because the Egyptian pyramid is not the same pyramid as the one he was shown in the math uh, class. And in most cases, um, we are used to draw the pyramid on the, on the board. And if you think about that, and if, if you think about students of 12, 13 years old, they don't have the abstraction yet, the enough abstraction yet, capability, to see on the two uh, dimensions board a 3D uh, object like a, like a pyramid. And so the teacher thinks he, that he is teaching something very nicely because he's showing the pyramid to the student, drawing the 2D uh, two dimensions board, 
and the student is imagine something completely different. And one of the ideas here is to put objects on the end of the, the student and to ask them to calculate the volume of a pyramid, but of a real pyramid, a 3D pyramid that he has in his hand. Uh, you cannot imagine the answers that some kids give us when we ask them to, to define or to um, describe what we have drawn on the board, on the two dimensions board, and, and we want to, to draw uh, well for the chemistry teachers that uh, are hearing me and, uh, and the biology teachers. And the methane uh, molecule that is a tetraedric geometry, um, and we we draw it in a 2D, a two dimensions board, and for them it is a cross, nothing more than a cross. And if you show them the concrete object, and this is a, one of the ideas here, we have the objects to show the students to put them on their heads. Of course, we. Uh, in the in the future class from lab in Brussels, they have the the, the, the screen with the three D application, and that can faci facilitate the um, the image for the for the students. But in most cases, uh, there is not enough money for such kind of device or such kind of application. So let's go to the concrete and put um, uh, the objects on the, the end of the students. The other purpose of this learning space is to, te to train teachers, train teachers on IBO and to train teachers on the use of ICT in context of classroom. Because most of the teachers know how to work with Word and with PowerPoint and so on, but when they want to integrate the ICT on the classroom, most of the teachers are completely lost and don't know how to do it. So one of the things that we provide here is training on context. And how to use on the middle of the room, on the middle of the classroom, um, the, the ICT, the devices, how to use the device that the student has on his own pocket, the cell phone or the tablet, to increase the interest, the interest on, the, on the class, uh, on, the, uh, on, the, the, on the class, of course, and uh, increase the learning uh, opportunities that we can uh, have um, in our class. And of course, in our case, that we are the first and the model room for Portugal, we are also a showroom for the industry partners, so they can show this uh, class, uh, this learning space to their uh, potential clients or to the policy makers that they went they want to convince that some kind of technology will bring uh, advantages to the learning in schools and so on. Uh, so we are always open to our partners uh, from the industry and they can use this space for that or for organizing meetings in the company. We already have meetings here by uh, two or three partners that um, uh, organize meetings in Portugal with, partner, uh, with partners from all over Europe and they come here to this school, they make the, the meeting here and they use the future classroom, the Sala de to, to do that meeting. So here, since September 2014, and these are numbers only until the end of 2015, so they are not quite updated. We have more than 300 teachers here, passing here uh, from all over the country. Uh, they came to see the, the room, to know the room, to know the space, to the, know the learning space, but also to do training and also to bring students. We, have, we received here classes from uh, four or five schools. Um, one of them uh, from a city uh, situated 400 kilometers north of, of Stubal. So they travel all the way from Aveiro to, to, to Stubal just to have a, a class here in the future classroom. Uh, then 
most of the students of the school already have been here at the, at the Sala do Aldo Futuro, um, having uh, learning stories, uh, developing learning stories about uh, most of the, of the subjects. Not all of them on STEM. The idea is that sometimes we made an articulation between STEM and the most uh, and the social or the languages. Uh, but uh, most of the students came here to have classes. We have the visit of uh, almost three, 30 uh, headmasters or heads of schools or directions of schools. Um, I must tell you that uh, uh, in Portugal, until the end of 2016, we expect that 30 uh, rooms like these open all over the country. There are already seven working with students, no, six with students and one with the master's degree students. Um, but until the end of uh, the year, uh, we expect that 30 of them are open all over the country. And, of course, we also receive European teachers that came here. Uh, uh, for instance, in last month, I had here a group of teachers were in the, doing Erasmus Plus in a nearby city, Zimbra, and none of them uh, knew, well, none of them knew the concept, none of them knew European school net, none of them knew about scientists. So it was a full day. They all, it was around 30 teachers from eight countries, eight different countries, that uh, um, get acquainted with this place, but also with the European School Net that did, didn't know that exists, and the scientific project, and so they were very um, interested on the visit. But we also have Irish teachers and so on. Next week we have another group from Sizimbra. They are, they, they, it is a training center of teachers that uh, applied to uh, several Erasmus Plus projects, and so the European teachers are come here ne next to the Thursday morning also to visit us. And also, we provide uh, Skype connections because I present the Sala do Futuro at the Future Classroom uh, workshops, um, especially scientists workshops. And the, the headmasters wanted to see with their own eyes our room, how it is made at school. So we, I provide them a Skype connection, and I can show them the, the room, because this camera that I'm using is somehow uh, mobile. I can move it around, and, I, talk, and ca I can show you, I can show them the different zones and how we do it. And the message is, yes, Yes, we can do it. Uh, we can do it at our schools. We already have two, do two daughters wor uh, working, two daughters of this room working in Portugal. Um, so, um, well, I, I hope that was an image imperative from its license. I didn't recommend. The daughters of this room, uh, this one um, in Alcanena was the first one that opens. That uh, gentleman there seated with a beer is the, our uh, present Minister of Education. He, he was present on the opening session of the, uh, on the inauguration of the, the room in Alcadena. Um, and the other three teachers are, are from a, a school in Barreiro, it's very near Stubal. It's, uh, it was uh, inaugurated in February, I think. So these two rooms in particular are daughters of this room because the principals came here first to get inspired and so um, we consider them our daughters. And uh, well, this is all for this presentation. I will now change, stop sharing. I still have time, yes, uh, Marina? Yes, we still have time. So since we started a little bit later, I think we could expand it like 10 more minutes. Okay, and so, so I, sh I can show you um, um, a learning story that we did here with students uh, with uh, 14 years old. It's eighth grade, so this is a learning story just for physics. 
Is there sound in outer space? I hope that you can hear the sound. The idea is to, is to show the students that uh, in, in the movie, um, just to do special effects, they do some physics mistakes and we were studying sound, so we asked the students if this was possible. And then we show them uh, a most classic uh, experiment. It's the, cla the, the experiment of the bell that is ringing inside of this uh, jar. And now we are taking the, the air out of the jar. And so the sound will stop because it will be out of air inside of the jar. We don't have the mechanic support to the propagation of sound. When I ask the students what happened, most of them, uh, the first answer is, well, we dis they disconnect the bell. And I told them, but they connect the bell on the green button and it's still on. So that's not the answer. So then they, they are divided in uh, teams, in five teams. Four of the teams have this explanation to do. And the fifth team is going to the create area and start working on the final presentation of the, of the, the team. This is a team of 12 students. Uh, 12 to 15 students. So each of the, each group will made a PowerPoint um, slide explaining what the, the sound needs to propagate. The other group, uh, how it is made, the space between the planets, stars, and so on. There are a lot of ma uh, matter or not, and so on. They will put those slides in a uh, in a OneDrive. Uh, folder that the, 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 the create team is receiving in, in, uh, in time. And so they integrate all the slides and make a final presentation. The idea is that they, at the end, they can hear, they return all here to the present area to watch the final presentation. And one member of each group, he has to defend the idea that he puts on the slide. So we are also working in um, uh, soft skills uh, because they have to communicate, they have to um, choose the right information to put the slide. The first classes that we have here, they put all the information that they found in the slide. So we, uh, the, the text on the slide was uh, very big and the information was very little. So they are learning to um, separate the important information from the, the rest. And so the idea was to create a final presentation. So as you can see, they have 40 minutes to do, all, to do it all, and then five minutes for the final presentation. And that is all. And for the final minutes that I have, I will stop sharing this. For the five minutes that I have, I will just do a small tour on the um, on the, the room. I will try to not to damage the work it is done with the audio because we had some audio problems. Uh, Enrique, if you uh, stop hearing me. Actually, I stopped hear you right now, Carlos. We cannot hear you right now. So whatever it is you disconnected, it's not working. Otherwise, as I said before, maybe if you check, if you are changing the, the audio connection, the audio device, you should also check it on the audio settings. If you connected another microphone different to the one you were using before. Now you can hear me. Now I can yeah. hear you. There's a echo, but I can hear you. Okay. Okay. So now I have the microphone with the red camera, and I will show you the, around the, the, the room. Um, so please don't be busy with the moving image, and uh, let's see if the video can still keep moving uh, around. So this is the present area. Um, 
And the, this is the present area that uh, we bought. We have those chairs from the skin case uh, uh, partner and also the symbol from the European School Net for the present area. We asked the, the European School Net the permit for use the image. As you can see on the windows over there, the decoration is the same. This is the developed area. If you visit already the future classroom lab, they have the, the, the table in the shape of a apple. We have the table in the shape of a cloud. Um, it was made in our school by a gentleman that knows how to do these things. So the tablets are from Microsoft. They were very kind to give them. Well, to put that here. That is the investigate area. As you can see, we have two tables, microscope, we have Arduino, we have there the, the robots, the robots from Lego and from Advanced, uh, it is a Japanese company. We have a lot of games from of the uh, fire. This is the collaborate area with the inter interactive board and the interactive table. It's a very, it's a place where students enjoy to be, special on the interactive table, especially uh, navigating on Google Maps, um, because uh, the interactive table is actually a giant tablet. Uh, so, and the younger students uh, like to be there uh, working on uh, problems and uh, um, crosswords and so on. And finally, the create zone, which over there, we have the green uh, tissue for the acrobacy also, and uh, we can change the sketch and uh, do whatever we want. Uh, actually, the English and French teachers are using a lot of this space because their students are working on interviews to scientists uh, along the story, the, along the history, and uh, then they can here to make the interview, and with the committee they can put the, the background of the, of the time of the, uh, of the, the finding. So if they uh, want to uh, interview Galileo, they put the visa power behind and so on. So, I think I will stay for now here. Can answer some questions if you want to or something, uh, Marina. Well, thank you, Carlos, for the presentation. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to write it down on the chat right now about the room, about methodologies, anything that you would like to ask Carlos. Um, we'll wait for a couple of minutes to see if anyone writes something, and then we'll try to answer them. Uh, the cross-curricular activities is a project of the school um, lead by the principal and uh, there, is, there were a team of teachers from different subjects that were together and finding the touching points uh, from the subjects of different uh, disciplines and so we can now uh, Use those examples to uh, develop a learning story and come here to apply it to the students. So, okay. so far, no questions, Carlos. So I guess everything was pretty clear. <laughs> Otherwise, I guess we'll close it right now. Um, 
wait, let me see. There is one question. Okay. Which is the most responsive department from, from companies? Education, marketing? That's a question from the master. Well, that's hard to answer because for, for some companies like uh, Promethean or uh, Microsoft, uh, the answer is education. They have the education department to, um, to uh, help teachers on their problems, and so this is a problem for them. Um, for other companies, if um, almost always the marketing. The marketing person is responsible to uh, make the proposition, the proposal to the board of the company if they want to support the project. So it's not a, a very direct answer because it, it depends on the company, actually. Okay, uh, there is actually another question. This comes from Nair and she's asking if it makes uh, sense, how can you start setting up a future classroom lab without a lot of money? Uh, as I explained earlier on my presentation, the idea is, well, start with the space, a big room, you need a big room, and in Portugal, at least a regular classroom has six by six meters, and that's small for a space like this. So you have you need something like twelve by six or something. Um, if you have space, try to get the, the equipment from your own school. You, if you start looking to your school, you will find a lot of equipment that is not being used on the right purpose that is meant to. And they, I gave you the example of the, the interactive uh, whiteboard. Uh, as you can saw here on, the, on my tour around the, around the class, I have this one and the other one is over there. Both of them, I get them from classrooms, regular classrooms, because they, are, they were only used as a projector. And this is not a projector, this is an interactive board. So what I did was, I bring the, the interactive boards to each space, and on, that, on those classrooms, I put the projectors and screens. The teacher has the projector, uh, if you have to have the projector, and in the, in the future classroom, I have the interactive board, and I can use it as an interactive board. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Um, I see there's some people who have entered a little bit later the question, just for them, if they want to ask something in particular or Carlos to repeat anything, please uh, share it right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there is one and another question. Which is the first step to take us to start when setting up a, an, a future classroom lab layout technology? So which would be the first step to do when starting in an SCL? Students. Students. Yeah. If, if you are, try, if you want to do a, a thing like this, it's because the students need it. So that's the first step. Do your students need it? After that, okay, and then we, we are doing the space for the students and try to um, keep the teachers with us and then put them inside the project. The idea in, in this school in particular started because we have bad results with students on the third cycle that students from 12 to 14, 15 years old. The, the results were bad and we, we are trying to improve the results of the students. That's the main objective of this learning space. So, when that is done, we, we, and you are thinking about the space, Get inspired, get inspired in the digital school lab in Brussels, get inspired in Portugal, get inspired with Karimata in Israel, because there are a lot of uh, uh, future classrooms already working in school, and, and then adapt the model to your own reality and to your own uh, needs.
How many students can be in the classroom of the future so that learning is enjoyable? Well, I would say that 15 is the most. The, 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 the best number is 15. Okay? Because you can have small teams of four, of four or five students, three to five students, and you can have one or two teachers, and you must understand that the idea here is not that the teacher is teaching anything. The teacher is being with the students and um, uh, providing, uh, providing that the, the research and the investigation that they do don't go uh, to the wrong way and they lost time. So, uh, I would say that uh, for a space like this, for a learning uh, space like this, uh, the best number is under 16 students. Okay. Thank you, Carlos. I have uh, the geology teachers use this tool, yes, of okay. course. Um, we have a learning story, a very, a very interesting learning story. Uh, I mentioned it on my presentation about the pyramid of the, the Egypt. And the, the question was, what is the weight of the pyramid of Egypt? And that learning story involved teachers of math, history, biology, geology, geography, and physics. We have an articulation um, between five teachers to solve that problem. And that problem was done by students of 13 years old, 7th grade. So it was very interesting, it was in several episodes of 45 minutes, of course, uh, and in each episode they would advance a little on the problem, and at the end, the very last episode was the discussion about, well, they have a number of the weight of the theory. That is a very good number, or it's just a uh, theoretical number. And we show them the pyramid inside with all the, the, the chambers and stairs and corridors, and they say, oh, we should take the, that stone uh, out of the way. But then was the discussion of with that kind of that big number of, on the way, the amount of stone that they took for the corridors and for the chambers was uh, uh, not important. So we are discussing a lot of science here because the accuracy of the calculation uh, depends on the objective of the problem. So it was very interesting. Okay, I can't see any other question. I don't know if you're receiving anything else, Carlos. No, I don't think so. Someone called and said that only now she can hear me. Okay. <laughs> we can have, uh, I can say to you that we have a, a learning story here that was very curious because it was between philosophy teacher and the safety teacher. And in philosophy, they study the, the evolution of the thinking on science. And in physics, we study physics from Aristotle, from, well, from the Greeks, and starting mainly in Aristotle, to Einstein. And the connection between the two uh, subjects was very interesting because students are very bored in philosophy because they don't see the meaning of the discipline of philosophy. And then suddenly they say, oh, that's why we study the evolution of the, the science uh, thought in philosophy. It's because it really happened in science. So it was very interesting to give, to give meaningful, uh, to, to, give, to give meaning to the learning in philosophy because they are science students. Okay. Okay. Um, well, thank you, Carlos, for your contribution. I think we're going to have to close the session now. So many thanks to, uh, for everyone for taking part in the webinar and for sharing your ideas and your thoughts. And of course, special thanks to Carlos, which is our presenter. presenter.
Um, in the upcoming days, we will send you a follow-up email with a survey, and we will upload the recording and all of the material shared on this webinar on the Scientix website. And I guess that's everything for today. Thank you again, Carlos, and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you to you, Marina, to Mikey, to Enrique for the support. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.